morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number. I have totally lost count, actually. 392. 392 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yay! Today, recording day is Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. And uh, as you can see, it's a very bright, sunny day here at uh, the Beaver Lodge. Uh, I think that there's something that happens with either spring or summer sun early in the morning if it comes up at the right angle and is uh, the right shade or whatnot that's uh, turning me pink. I've tried uh, everything on the monitors uh, to try and adjust that. And uh, I've tried uh, logging out and back in and all that kind of stuff and rebooting. Uh, uh, but I think it just might be Mother Nature uh, today. So um, enjoy the glow. <laughs> I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns, he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. And today, exceptionally, I am going to do a couple of extra thank yous right away. Uh, because uh, yesterday, after um, uh, hearing what... Uh, our experience with Etsy has been, um, kits, uh, I guess they felt sorry for us <laughs> or, mm -hmm. or wanted to help out. Uh, thank you. Uh, because, uh, three tips came in immediately after the show. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Kit Taffy G. Seriously, you did not have to send that to compensate for the money that we lost. You already bought the cup. Um, but thank you. <laughs> it's very kind of you very very kind of you and kit cassie and kit vim thank you That's, thanks man. we literally have the best kits mm. seriously thank you it was like they were so i guess moved or felt so bad that you were out of pocket that so um yeah thank you you you, you all are wonderful you are they're just just as delightful um so big thank you go go to you all right uh ah yes we'll get there we'll get there kid argosy <laughs> what happened with the contractor uh um to, 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 to mr grizzly how's your mental health today um uh still 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 struggling but you know that's par for the course when you uh, have depression and anxiety you just work through it as you can i'm not i'm not I'm not really super messed up or anything. I'm just, you know, not everything I can be right now. And that's okay. okay. Life goes on one day at a time, right? Yeah. Uh, everything went well with the contractor, ultimately. Um, but um, yes, it was one of those, um, we need to have a talk things. Um, how to put I love my beaver sweetie very, very much. Um, and uh, it's going to be 12 years in November. And um, I cannot imagine a single moment without him. But on paper, we should not work. Right. <laughs> like at 
all, at all. He worries. I'm really chill. So <laughs> I'm the river, right? But all things is going wrong that way. Okay, well, we'll just go that way. Mm, yeah. So, um, but yeah, he worries. Uh, but turns out that um, he made um, a, a mistake. Mm -hmm. um, when you need an answer right away, these days, because, you know, we're older, things used to be different back in the day, you call. Right. And if it's something that, you want you think of and you want somebody to answer but you don't need it right away well then you'll send a text or you'll send an email because it's a deferred form of communication when someone gets to it they get to it yeah. except if you happen to work in a job where you're essentially always on call like say you're an OBGYN mm -hmm. or a contractor who might get a call at 2 o'clock in the morning because a door got kicked in or something and so, um, yes, uh, my sweetie had questions and concerns about something and, um, I guess sent them in a message at around nine 30 when the contractor was already in bed and well, because he didn't know whether or not it was an emergency uh. <laughs> before he opened it. So, uh, yes, we needed to have a, a little talk about, uh, appropriate times to let concerns being known and to also, um, remind us that one of the reasons that we are paying him about $30,000 is for him to worry for us. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, yes, um, um, there was a discussion, and uh, I, I, I believe <laughs> we have come to an agreement. <laughs> Although, uh, telling my beaver sweetie not to worry is like telling the tide not to come in. Mm. It's just kind of his thing. Understandable. Right. Yes. So, um, I think that's what, like I say, when we have compatible crazy, um, he worries a lot and I have the patience of a saint. So <laughs> it's like, sweetie, you need to calm down. <laughs> Trust the experts. They know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know what? You can't piss off a contractor more. Than, than by trying to micromanage it and thinking you know more than the contractor does at doing their job. That's how you get contractors purposely messing up stuff. And giving Because they just, you know. Given that my sweetie is a mechanical engineer at heart and mm -hmm. recently took some carpentry courses. Um, yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, in this case, it's a bit of a, a case of a little bit of knowledge is a terrible thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Except in his case, it's not, I mean, you know, with the mechanical engineering thing, it's a PhD, so it's not a little bit of knowledge, but. No, no, of course, but. But I do recognize what you're saying in that, in yes. that instance, right? It's, so like, like, yeah, it's like, dude, shut up and let the man do his job, basically, like, is what you need to say. Like, we don't have anything to which we can affix aluminum to the concrete. <laughs> it's like, like okay, or, or this and the aluminum that don't work together, they eat each other. It's like, oh. <laughs> well, as a chemist, my sweetie understands that one. So, <laughs> right? so it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, but yeah, I think we're, we're, we're now all on the same page, uh, which does have me breathing a little bit easier. Because <laughs> it's, it's, um, you know, when you love someone, worries are legitimate and whatnot, and you want to be there for them. But sometimes mm -hmm. it's like, okay, we're talking about this again. <laughs> it's like you really need to chill. Or at least can we not worry about this until tomorrow, like when we actually have a chance to talk to someone? Because there's yes. no way we can get any new information now, right? We're not going to, we're not going to move the peg forward on the board another millimeter until we have a chance to actually talk to someone and it is 11 p.m. <laughs> yeah, that, that guy's already in bed. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's like, ah. So, yes, uh, we've had the talk, uh, and uh, they will be here uh, next week uh, to start putting on the siding. And uh, hopefully, uh, this phase of the renovations will be done. And that, uh, but uh, my beaver sweetie, though, however, did spot something that is really good. So, we're probably going to have to have a little bit of masonry work done. Um, under the edges of the house mm -hmm. because it's an old house and turns out that there's a gap. So it's like if we're putting all this insulation, but all the wind can just come in and whip in and go under and then into the house, we're kind of defeating the purpose. Yeah. So we're going to have to seal that somehow. Uh, and I think that's what, that was one of the things also, I, I think uh, maybe Ver Sweetie was under the, the impression that uh, this company would be doing that sealing. And it's like, no, that's masonry work. We don't do that. It's like, Oh, so yeah, you probably should do that. Would be a counter, a counter purpose if you didn't. But that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Kid Argos, the agent project. That's exactly the word he used, which was a new word I had never heard in my entire life until yesterday, about <laughs> nine thirty in the morning. So parging is now part of my vocabulary. <laughs> oh, you've never heard of that before. I had never heard of it oh, at okay. all. It's a completely new word to me. You have to understand that well, I grew up in a foster home with five foster brothers, and since I was always the youngest or second youngest. Like as it, even if I was 16, my job was like painting baseboards. Right. Because everybody else already had. So it's like, yeah, I know. I don't, I really don't. This is not my field. I mean, I watched a lot of HGTV when I was young and stuff like that. And there's a couple of things I know, but home rhino shows. But yeah, this is not a. This is not my field. This is where I turn around and look at Alex go, well, you're the engineer. <laughs> it's like, can we do this? I don't know. I was like, oh, you're the chemist. Do these two things go together? <laughs> so right. It's like, oh. you know, it's like this. I, 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 I am, I am humble enough to recognize when something is not my field. <laughs> not that I'm not capable of it. It's just that I don't have the knowledge. I spent my time elsewhere. <laughs> All right. So that's the update, kids and cubs. Uh, so, but uh, everything is now on track and everybody is calm and uh, we have a plan and uh, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. Uh, let's see. There's uh, a lot of stuff um, nationally um, because a lot of the big stuff is international right now for some reason. Uh, but nationally, um, well, we could start with some wildfire stuff since we're starting with an update. It's not so much anything to do with the situation going on right now, but we are having this debate constantly about, uh, well, we're not having this debate. Some people want to have the debate of uh, arson versus mother nature versus, uh, well, arson versus mother nature, and then uh, all fires started by humans are arsons. Right, not rather the, than actually. not the actual case. Yes, well, we actually now have data to support that. According to the CBC here, in an average year, roughly half of wildfires in Canada are started by lightning and the other half by humans. But researchers are saying that they need more information about how that is changing. In many regions, lightning is becoming the number one source of new fire starts, says Mike Flanagan, a wildfire expert based at Thompson Rivers University in Kamloops, British Columbia. He says that human caused fires, uh, everything from campfires or down power lines. Mm -hmm like unattended campfires. So it's not like somebody committed arson. Somebody might have been careless or negligent. Which happens. Right. Like this. Or somebody was doing some work somewhere and a power line got downed and mm -hmm. sets a fire, carelessness. But these are not arson. No, no. Right. So, and that's where the, the anti-everything loudmouth movement is taking all these things, putting together and saying that it's arson. Like this, of course, saying it, it can't be lightning all that much and all that kind of stuff. Um, but Mike Flanagan says that those, the human caused fires from campfires to down power lines are on the decline and the largest fires are caused by lightning. And those can become more common because research is, su is suggesting that as we get warmer, we can expect more lightning. Now, as we get warmer, that means things are less, things are less moist, mm -hmm. which means that there's more fuel and more fuel that is dry and getting drier. Nearly 60% of Canada's wildfires were the result of lightning last year. Uh, and that those ones 
led to fires that uh, destroyed more than 90% of the area burned. Really? Yes. Well, I was, I'm not entirely surprised. I just didn't know that. Oh. Yeah. Which is an area larger than Greece. Yeah, it's, 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 that's a big space. Yeah. <laughs> so, and then researchers spent uh, the winter tracking the fires that were smoldering underground and that flared up when, in the spring. So uh, Aaron Ellen Whitman, uh, who is a scientist with Natural Resources Canada, says uh, we don't have necessarily uh, yet solid numbers, but these overwintering fires need to be better understood. She says, we're noticing them more, and it's possible and very likely that they are changing, but it's also we don't have a great handle on how common they were in each province uh, in the past and in, and in each territory. Since each province and territory keeps their own records of how fires start, uh, John Little with the Canadian Forest Service says the federal government is working to make sure these records are consistent so that they can understand what's behind the fires and find ways to prevent them. Um, so yeah, more and more of them are being caused by lightning, and it seems that the ones being caused by lightning are actually taking out more territory, specifically. So um, now we have some data when they come around and they tell us, uh, or they try, they try to gaslight us about wildfires, gaslighting us about wildfires. There's something about that that sounds politically weird, being gaslit yeah. about fire. Yeah, it's, yeah. Anyway, I'm sure some a poet can do something with that somewhere. Uh, also, uh, with regard to the tornado that touched down uh, near Rigaud, um, it seems that no one was hurt, uh, but three houses and a farm uh, in Rigaud and another house and uh, Point Fortune uh, were damaged, and that there are experts from Western University and the Northern Tornado Project on the ground inspecting the aftermath to try and determine how strong the tornado was and that the, they are hoping to have a, a rating on the tornado later today. Okay. Um, but uh, Aaron uh, Jaffe, who is the team leader, uh, said that, uh, uh, quote, in May, and strong tornadoes in May in Quebec aren't super common. Often we don't get out to Quebec for ground surveys until at least June. So we really started the season a little early this year. But climate change had nothing to do with it, right? No. No, 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 no. This is just a natural, normal cycle every, like, just, you know, thousand years or so. Yeah. yeah. Yep, just, you know, we all need carbon. Plants need carbon. Oh. Right. There's uh, because the concept of a too too much or too little of a good thing is ha has never been a thing ever. Like philosophers have never expounded on you know every substance on the planet being capable of being a remedy or a poison. The difference between one or the other is the dose. Mm -hmm. Nobody's ever thought about that. We haven't had this knowledge for like hundreds of years. It's all you. It's like how can a, how can we as a species be so damn smart and so damn dumb at the same time? It's the paradox of humanity. I swear. We are so freaking brilliant that we can send each other to the moon. We can you know send people up in space and combine chemicals together up there in zero gravity that can't be combined down here. We, it's, and uh, on one hand, and like, and then on the other hand, we all can't agree that vaccines are a good thing, for example. Or we all can't agree that, you know, flying a, a Nazi flag is probably not a nice thing to do. Or we can't all agree that maybe everyone should have a home. I, uh, I don't. Uh, I, don't know. I don't get it, man. <laughs> don't even bother trying some days. It'll just drive you crazy. I know. Some days um, you just got to let loose. Yeah, no, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's, it's, um, it's weird. Um, 
The House is getting ready to rise for the summer break. They've got about uh, four more weeks before things are done. So there's going to be a lot of uh, uh, closure motions, closure, uh, invocation of debate closure, maybe uh, sitting late to try to get things through. Um, but Which is normal for this time of year. This is not is, out of the ordinary. This is, yeah, yeah. you know, this is yeah. very standard operating procedure. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and uh, for some reason, uh, the conservatives, at least under certain things, seem to be wanting to be a little bit more cooperative. Um, well, you haven't like heard that. a lot about the anti-scab bill for some reason. And the reason for that would be is that uh, Bill C-58, which would prohibit the use of scabs during strikes in all federally regulated workplaces, including the banking, transportation, and telecommunications sector, Past third reading with unanimous support from all parties. How'd that happen? <laughs> Am I really? Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm not going to complain, but it kind of makes me wonder what's up because uh, you know me. New behavior makes my antenna go up. Mm -hmm. This is abnormal behavior from the conservatives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Quote, this is a decades-long fight, NDP leader Jagmeet Singh told reporters ahead of Monday's vote. This would not have happened but for new Democrats. Uh, we forced forcing. them. Drink the government to do this. We hope that we will not only make sure that this is banned at the federal level, but we can inspire provinces and territories to put in similar legislation so that we can once and for all ban scab workers at every level across this country. Similar legislation has been implemented for years in Quebec and British Columbia, while Manitoba's recently elected new Democrat government introduced anti-replacement worker bill earlier this year. Singh was joined by several union leaders, including B. Brusky, uh, president of the Canadian Labour Congress, who said it was, quote, a historic day for workers in Canada. Quote, it's incredibly important that we level the playing field at the bargaining table, and this legislation does exactly that. No worker in Canada should ever have to worry about their job being replaced by a replacement worker. That is not fair, and that is not right. Labor relations will continue, but they will continue in a much more respectful manner. Yeah, just a, this is great. This is great news. I just, I'm, I'm shocked that the conservatives supported it. I, I am as well. Because they're typically the reform party. That's really what they are. Well, they're the party of no. Anti-union. Right? So. Anti-workers' rights. I mean. Uh, Keep the wages low. There's the meme that keeps on going around saying that there's no MP that has voted more often against pro-worker legislation in their political career than Pierre Polyev. Of course, he's had 20 years to do it. So, I mean, that's a lot of votes. Uh, but, yeah, it's. The part of me that is a little bit suspicious makes me wonder because of the thing that he did on the capital gains tax where he didn't want to say anything. And, and Pierre has this thing, and I've mentioned it a couple of times now, where he pretends it doesn't exist. So, for example, for dental care, the question for the longest time was, would you cut the program? He says, well, there's no program. No person has been helped yet. Well, like this, many avoid. Now that is the case. There's two, two, 2 million people enrolled now, at least, and you know, to over 10,000 providers now. Last time we reported, I think, was about 1 million enrolled and 5,500 mm -hmm. providers, so people are coming on. Um, so Christopher Freeland separated the capital gains thing out of the budget bills and is going to make a standalone bill out of it so that the conservatives are going to have to pronounce themselves. Um, and he's been saying that on, on a lot of things. He's, you know, when they ask him about the capital gains legislation, he says, well, there's no legislation on the table yet. It doesn't exist, right? So to avoid commenting. I'm wondering if this anti-scab legislation, and then the next thing that we are going to talk about there, is the votes for that are things that, he doesn't want to vote against now because all we'll do is raise hackles in the news and then he wins and then just simply repeals them. Yeah. Because he likes to take the easy way out. <clears throat> well, I 
mean? Safi votes against capital gains now. That will be my thing. If he votes for the capital gains inclusion, I start a pool. How long will it take till he starts campaigning on reversing it? Hmm. Because he doesn't want the fight. Yes. And he certainly won't turn around and campaign on reversing it right away because he's still got over a year to the election. He doesn't want that to be the narrative. So how long does he sort of catch and kill this? By voting for it now? And then, I don't know, five days before the vote or something? Putting it in the election campaign <laughs> saying, you know what, I'm going to flip this. Yeah, it's, it's a good question. It's a good question. I... It's not a normal thing that people do, no. but I don't put anything past him, right? When it comes to dirty tricks. That's a good question from Linda. I was wondering if maybe Skippy wants the conservative senators to sink ah. the anti-scab legislation, and then he can just shrug and chalk it up to sober second thought. Ah. That's a good point. That might be the game they're playing because... Uh, why Why would the cons support this? It's just beyond me. That's not their MO. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so you could let the senators take up the fight and stall and delay. And I mean, the Senate is usually is eventually going to pass it, though. I would think Because so. they usually send it, they could stall delay, send it back once, and then it gets sent back, and then they'll vote. Given that the conservatives, in particular the NDP, are very, 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 very eager to get this, and it mm -hmm. passed unanimously. So it, it, it would be a gamble. It would be a gamble on this one, a just because gamble. it passed. It, it, well, because all the, all the parties in the House supported it, so the conservatives having supported it, and then to send their senators to delay it, pass at least past the four week break, so four weeks until the break, mm -hmm. I should say, uh, because I mean this is this is coming back. I mean, if it doesn't if it doesn't pass now, it'll come back on the order paper in September. It's just that the liberals would like to campaign on it on the barbecue circuit over the course of the summer. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's mm -hmm. that's how the game is played, right? You pass mm -hmm. the, the key legislation that you've been working about. You pass your budget stuff, you know, like this, and then you go out over the summer and you, you know, you kiss hands and shake babies. And, you know, and, what's that? Shake hands don't, and kiss don't babies. Do that. Don't shake babies. Don't even joke about that. <laughs> That's not. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Kiss babies and shake hands. Yes. On, on the wow, circuit. dude. <laughs> <laughs> do not shake babies. <laughs> don't do, do that. That's really babies. bad. That was a joke. Um, I was pretending to be obtuse. Okay. Do not shake the babies. <laughs> that reminds me when I was like taking German class and they were teaching, I think it was, it, was, is it prepositions? Yeah. And it's like, they had pictures and it was like, ich gucke für das Baby. I cook for the baby. Mm -hmm. And the baby sitting at the table has got a bib. It's like, ah, it's place, you know, this food is being served. And ich gucke das Baby. I cook the baby. Yes, as the baby is like being thrown into the pot, and the baby's like, "Yay!" <laughs> In the image, it's like I've always, I will always remember prepositions save lives. <laughs> well, remember, um, sometime today when you see somebody you care about, yell at them to let them know, "I love you, man," but say it in German so that they can freak the hell out of them. There's a, you ever see there's a series online and it says, uh, words in other languages. Oh, yes. The word ambulance in English, ambulance. Yes. French, ambulance. Italian, ambulancia. Uh, Spanish, ambulancia. German, Krankenwagen. <laughs> Krankenwagen. <laughs> Krankenwagen. Yes. When you see somebody you love or care about today, tell them, but yell it at them in German so that will keep them on their toes and make uh, life fun. So, uh, according to um, the uh, iPolitex here, the federal government's bill banning replacement workers during labor disputes is off to the Senate after passing third reading. Um, 
The bill has been long been on the wish list of Canada's largest labor unions, but had mm -hmm. never received sufficient backing until the NDP listed banning replacement workers as one of the party's key priorities in the supply and confidence agreement negotiated with the Liberals. Um, and then it has the, the quote that I already read from uh, Jagmeet Singh here. Uh, Labor Minister Seamus Regan told reporters his government has already reached out to provinces about bringing forward similar legislation. So uh, that's what we mentioned here. And then we had uh, the stuff from the Canadian Labor Congress. Um, but uh, he also says uh, that the, the bill, sorry, the bill was amended at committee to short it, shorten its implementation period from 18 months to one year. So not only did the conservatives vote for it, but when the law is passed, uh, it receives royal assent within the law. There's a, a line that states when the law comes into effect. It doesn't. Not, not all laws necessarily come to effect upon the moment they are passed. Sometimes there's, a, like for example, if there's a business law that requires a change, sometimes they get a year before it comes into effect. So they give people a year to make the adjustments, and then, right, they're in violation of the law. So they were going to allow 18 months between the time it passed and the time it actually came into effect. So businesses would have had an extra 18 months to be able to use scabs if they had wanted to, mm -hmm. for example. Well, not businesses, but whoever's affected by this law. Well, that has now been reduced to 12 months, and the conservative agreed to that too. Okay. So, uh, yes, Labor Minister Seamus O'Regan earlier this month said, basically, we went back to the Canada Industrial Review Board and said, can you do this? And they said, I think we can do 12 months. I'll take them at their word as I did before. Now we're able to move from 18 months to 12. Speaking after the vote, O'Regan said he was, quote, very relieved and happy to see the bill pass unanimously. Quote, it's a real message to workers right across this country that they are valued. If you go back, this is probably the single biggest demand of the labor movement in 100 and God knows years. I would say it goes back to before Canada was a country. Mm. Th this is significant. Oh, yeah. While the NDP liberal agree, and th that's why I'm like so amazed that it just passed like butter in a pan. Mm. It, it just makes me wonder what's up. <laughs> While the NDP liberal agreement ensured the bill's passage, conservative leader Pierre Poliev's stance on the anti-scab legislation had been a mystery until his party voted in support of the bill at second reading, which we reported on. Mm -hmm. The Tory leader has attempted to position himself as a friend of workers during stump speeches and rallies across the country, but ahead of the vote, business groups including the Canadian Chamber of Commerce and Canadian Federation of Independent Business had urged Poliev to oppose C-58. This is the first time an anti-scab bill passed through third reading in 2006 after Stephen Harper became prime minister. A blood MP's private members bill banning replacement workers was sent to committee with support from liberals and new Democrats. But the bill died at report stage after several liberal MPs withdrew their support. At some point in it, the article does not go on to say why that was the case at the time. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a first instance of conservatives being cooperative uh, and then yesterday something else happened it seems that uh they sent out conservative mp michael chong to write mm. a letter to public safety minister dominic leblanc tuesday advising him of plans to move a motion in the house that could see bill c70 passed as soon as next week. Bill C-70 would establish a foreign agents registry that would require individuals attempting to influence Canadian democracy to disclose their ties with other countries. And the conservatives are saying that they want to cooperate to speed the Liberals' foreign registry bill through the house so does that mean it's a really really good bill i'm very confused and that me. justin trudeau the tyrant isn't using this as a way to create some loopholes so that he can get some foreign help from china to help him remain prime minister i'm very confused i'm very confused right now we're in the upside down we're in the opposite land again not complaining, but Just, this is, if there's one, it's like, like conservative typical plays, we want a foreign agents registry bill. Yeah, we said we were going to bring one. No, we need to bring, yeah, we said we we're going to, the thing that you're telling us that we should do, we've already promised to do it. We're, we're working on it. 
And then the normal conservative response is, oh my God, look at this bill. It's so full of loopholes. They're setting it up to help themselves or something. And it's like, oh, look at this bill. Let's help you pass it faster. What? Well, it, here's the best part. Here's the best part of this. This is how government's supposed to work. It's right? supposed to work. Hey, you know what? I know we're in opposition, but this is a good idea. We're going to support it. Or, you know what? This is a good bill, but it would be better if you added these two or three. We don't oppose it, but it would be better if you added these two. If you added this in. and propose. Yes. It's oppose and propose. Yes. Not just, not just, no. It's like, it's good, but, you know, if you added this in, we'd support it. That's how government's supposed to work. So what, I'm, I'm. I haven't seen this in so long now. I just don't know what to make of it. Again, according to uh, iPolitics, in this case, Marco Vigliotti, who's the editor-in-chief, the conservatives are offering to help speed up passage of liberal legislation aimed at cracking down on foreign interference in Canadian elections. Whoa. Conservative MP Michael Chong wrote a letter to public safety minister saying that he plans to uh, move a motion that could see Bill C-70 pass through the House as soon as next week. Second reading debate of the bill introduced earlier this month is slated to start on Wednesday. Today, Chong said conservatives are prepared to move their motion, which would need to be approved unanimously after debate wraps up. Because, oh, yeah, that's like, does everybody approve? And then you usually get one person going, no. Mm -hmm. Like, remember when they denied Elizabeth May the right to speak on International Women's Day? Right. How that happened? Like, it was just one person said, no. I was like, well, motion's denied. You need to sit down. So, similar here. It's like, so it looks like the conservatives have decided to control the seals and not have one say no. Chang said the conservatives are prepared to move their motion, which would need to be approved unanimously after debate wraps up. A conservative source said the text of the motion could change as discussions are taking place with the liberals, but as it stands, it would set up timelines for how long the bill would be debated at each stage in the House, leading to a third reading vote next week. Quote, as the general election draws closer, time is running out to strengthen the confidence Canadians have in our elections, wrote Chong. Conservatives will work in good faith to ensure the rapid progress of Bill C-70 through the House while ensuring sufficient scrutiny of the bill's measures. Most notably, Bill, that's a boilerplate statement. Mm -hmm. Most notably, Bill C-70 would establish a foreign agents registry that would require individuals attempting to influence Canadian democracy to disclose their ties with other countries. Should the bill pass, anyone with a relationship with a foreign entity and that is attempting to influence the Canadian government on behalf of that entity will be required to publicly register all relevant activities. It would also equip the Canadian Security Intelligence Service, or CSIS, with an increased ability to communicate potential threats to non-governmental stakeholders and proposes three new criminal offences related to committing acts associated with attempted foreign interference. A spokesperson for Dominique Leblanc, the minister, said that Chong's offer was welcomed. Quote, we are very pleased to see that Mr. Chong and his party are prepared to work with us to speed up the adoption of the Countering Foreign Interference Act. This bill would strengthen the tools that our national security and intelligence agencies use to counter foreign interference and protect Canadians, Jean-Sébastien Comeau said in a statement. We have always said that foreign interference should not be a partisan issue, and this is a step in the right direction. In a briefing for reporters, senior government officials said inspiration for the registry came from allies like Australia and UK, both of them uh, which have already implemented and both of them which are who are part of our Five Eyes partners. It should be noted that certain individuals like diplomats or government officials traveling to Canada on official business will not be required to register their activities because those are already covered under you know, diplomatic law. Um, Government officials gave the example of an individual in Canada who enters into a contract with a foreign state to persuade the federal government to introduce a new policy. If this individual, under their contract, began writing and publishing articles advocating for the policy without disclosing their international ties, they would be required to register their activities. Individuals who knowingly fail to register or commit any other, any other offense under the Act could be hit with a $5 million fine or face up to five years in jail. This yeah. The registry will be administered by new foreign influence transparency commissioner who, like the competition commissioner, will be an agent of parliament approved for a term of up to seven years. And the reason why they do seven years is so that uh, um, often when there's a transfer of government, um, it happens over those course of those seven years. So therefore, it makes it uh, more likely that uh, these commissioners 
will be more independent because often they're covering uh, a government uh, that has not appointed them. Example. As it is currently written, the bill will come into an effect one year after receiving royal assent as to allow time for the new commissioner's office to be set up. When asked earlier in May whether the bill would pass in time for these new provisions countering foreign interference to be in place ahead of the next federal election, Leblanc said that would be ideal, but acknowledged there can be unexpected delays when working in a minority parliament. If the bill did not pass through the House and Senate until the fall, it would not come into force until later in 2025. The latest possible date for the next federal election is October 2025, though the writ may drop much sooner should the supply and confidence agreement between the Liberals and NDP fall through, and a lot of people are speculating that that might happen after the next budget. Not that there would be an election called necessarily on the budget, uh, but that the NDP would give itself about six months outside the deal to sort of build a, uh, a campaign or a narrative, whatnot, that they're not uh, the liberals' little buddy. Mm. I guess um, I, I think it would be too late for that at that point. I figure uh, my personal suggestion would be to just lean into it and say that you're providing the cooperative government that Canadians keep asking for when they elect minority parliaments. But, I don't know, Jug Meat wants to portray himself of, as some guy who's a, a bit more dynamic uh, and has more influence than he actually does. So chances are they'll, uh, my guess, my prediction is that they will uh, break up the agreement shortly after the budget or whatnot. And then I guess, or shortly before the budget to create some mystery. Oh my God, will they, won't they? And then depending how their financial situation is and how the polls are, they will, or they won't pull the plug at that point. Ah. Uh, now, the Conservatives and the NDP have been calling for the creation of a foreign agents registry for uh, quite a while. Uh, so that probably explains why. I'm just, like I said, I'm just surprised that the Conservatives seem to be happy with the Liberals' initial proposal rather than fighting. Um, how would I put it? The, yeah, but not like that. <laughs> That's what I, that, that would be the normal thing I would expect in this uh, situation here. In addition to the registry, Bill C-70 would also update the governing legislation for CSIS, given the intelligence agency the ability to share information with entities other than the federal government. Speaking to reporters, Libla identified provinces and territories, universities, and private companies as entities that have been calling for the change. Government officials said the amendments will help improve Canada's resilience to foreign interference, but the changes will only apply on a case-by-case -case basis as to, the best balance as to best balance privacy concerns with other requirements. In certain situations, said officials, it would be up to the Minister of Public Safety to, de 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 to determine whether it's in the national interest to disclose the information. A resilient and informed population is our best defense against foreign interference, said Leblanc. The bill also gives CSIS the authority to collect from within Canada intelligence that resides outside of Canada. Three new offenses uh, that were included are um, committing, let's see, other notable changes include the introduction of three new offenses for committing an indictable, of, indictable offense at the direction of a foreign entity, engaging in a state-backed deceptiveness for the benefit of a foreign country, and engaging in state-backed deceptiveness to the detriment of Canadian democracy. Each of the new offenses carries a minimum, maximum penalty of life imprisonment. So three new charge offenses with a penal, maximum penalty of life imprisonment and $5 million fines. Seems like they're taking this seriously. So, and uh, I apologize, uh, some cups. I'm uh, tripping over my tongue a lot today, and you can tell I'm French because whenever I get frustrated, I say, voyons, which is just like, like, come on. <laughs> voyons, no. Voyons, no. So there you go. Um, so conservatives being cooperative. It's, it's, I'm happy to report. This is great. We report where it's due. on things like this. This is good. This is a good thing. Hey, way, way to go. Way to go. Good on you. Seriously. Good on the Conservative Party. Congratulations for doing something that's actually good for Canadians instead of just saying no to everything. I salute you. Me too. Positive like, reinforcement. Yeah. Keep it up, please. This is good. This is more. good. Give us more of this peace, order, and good government. This is all we ever want as Canadians. Peace, order, and good government. Right. 
to get saucy, happy to report, but very suspicious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but positive reinforcement. We'll take it. You know. We'll take it. Today, we'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Kids some cups. I know. Kid Linda, I wish I could feel happy and not suspicious about it. I do too. But you know what? Today, I'm going to follow the same response. The, so the same thing with the contractor today, based on the information I know now, I am very happy. Once something comes along that tells me maybe I should not be happy, then, <laughs> but mm. for now, I am a happy beaver <laughs> and I'm going to run with that because I am hardwired for happiness and optimism. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, how much time do we have left this week? Like, about five minutes. I have an 8.30 meeting, so i got to take a shower and get ready to go into the office. All right, then. Uh, lots of international stuff. We won't get into today. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, the PWHL final, final, final uh, is tonight. Okay. It is tonight? Good. I'll have to yeah, check it out. Yeah, because I, 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 I believe the series I, is tied 2 too. I'll have to find a stream somewhere because I don't have cable and I haven't had it for 14 years. So, you know, I'm look, there's always a stream somewhere. <laughs> there is. There is. For this, there is. Absolutely. So I'll find it. Yeah. Uh, so it's tonight, uh, Minnesota, Boston, uh, the final one. Uh, yeah, this series is indeed tied 2 2. So it's game five, and uh, that will be it for the inaugural season. So uh, tune into that if you can. At uh, the French Open, uh, Leila, Annie Fernandez, Felix Ogielia, Simon Denis Shapovalov are all on court today. Uh, Layla was on court at the time that the show was broadcast, so I don't know what the score is right now. Um, Andy Murray uh, had faced Stan Wawrinka, both of them, uh, about the only two people that uh, got Grand Slam championships in the whole Federer Djokovic Nadal era. era. Uh, so uh, it was kind of sad in one way to see him playing in round one, and both of them, uh, you know, are near the ends of their career. So that was uh, uh, Andy Murray lost that, and that might be his last overmatch uh, at the French Open unless he's uh, at Roland Garros, unless he's playing at the Olympics. And uh, same thing for uh, Rafael. Nadal coming back from injury. He was not seeded and uh, had uh, Drew Alexander Zverev, the number four seed in the first round. Uh, Nadal played well but lost. And uh, he says that he will be back for the Olympics, but uh, this may be his last uh, Grand Slam at uh, the French Open. He didn't want to say for sure because I think he wants to see if his body can hold up and he can try to do a one last better run for it next year. Uh, so he didn't want a, a, a sort of a goodbye ceremony for the people to organize. So mm -hmm. people were wondering, like, like, why didn't they, like, because he's won the things like seven times or something. Or so like, you know, why didn't they do this big ceremony for him? It's, well, he didn't want one because he wanted to keep the door open just in case. So, and uh, Team Canada, uh, for people who like the sport of cricket, I don't know much about it, um, but a while ago, Team Canada qualified for the very prestigious World Cup of Cricket. And uh, yesterday, uh, it's coming up soon. Uh, we'll start sometime in June. And uh, apparently, they had a test match yesterday against Nepal, and uh, they won it. So um, it might not be a situation like the World Cup of Soccer, where like Canada got in mm -hmm. and lost every match and didn't even score a goal in the first. Like maybe Team Canada has a chance. No, they scored a goal. To the first time. Oh, in the first, the first time. time. Oh, oh, you mean back in 86? Yeah, back in 86. Yeah. Because Team Canada usually does not qualify for this. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is, you know, it's like, well, they just come in and it's like, hey, we were here and get bounced. Well, they're able to beat Nepal. So mm -hmm. who knows? Who knows? Well, I have to try to get someone from the from a Canadian Cricket Association come in and maybe explain that to us because I know nothing about the sport. And I certainly would like to cheer Team Canada on, but I don't was, know how. I know that, that uh, Team Canada is well respected in cricket. Yes. Uh, I don't I don't know nearly enough about the game to to make any sort of commentary. I do know that uh, when they show a match like there's the Indian Premier League, which what they did was they augmented the game because the game could go you could have a, a single day match or a three day match. Right. And Indian Premier League decided we're going to have maximum three hours. Yeah. Shorten it down. Uh, and some games are 90 minutes. And the reason they did that was to keep television viewers, you know, tuning in, number one and number two, who has time to spend an entire day watching a cricket match? Like literally, you know, so they, they 
they augmented the game so that they could put it into bite-sized chunks that people could deal with. And, you know, the audience there is about 900 million. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the second most popular sport on earth after football, or as we in North America say, soccer. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a T20 tournament. I don't know, I don't know what that means, but I'm guessing that's a certain form of cricket. And yes. uh, cricket was once an Olympic sport in 1900. Mm -hmm. because, and it seems that it is scheduled to be included again in 2028. So Team Canada is peaking at a good time. That's good. That's good. All right. Mr. Grizz, uh, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So tell your peeps and popes all about us. If you don't want to miss an episode, you don't have to. Thanks to the Ray Girl. She's so fly. And she sponsored our pod page. So if you scan the QR code that Mr. Gillesley will put up there or use the lovely digits on your lovely hands or your voice command to go to podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. If you subscribe there, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. If you would like to support us in other ways, make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eager Beaver YouTube page and click like, share, and subscribe. We've had uh, 11 new subscribers overnight. So uh, thank you very much. That warms my little the, beaver heart. I restarted an ad campaign. Yeah. So uh, thank you so very much. Really appreciate that. Uh, like, share, subscribe, smash all the buttons. There you go. Kit Elaine right on time. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you reminding everybody in the chat to do that. And then if you'd like to support us in other ways, uh, yesterday was a great day on our coffee page. So thank mm -hmm. you, everyone. Uh, if you like our product and you would like to uh, make sure that, uh, you know, we're able to keep on bringing it to you then uh, you can support us by going there. That's where you will find our tip jar. And uh, if you make a contribution there, um, well, our good friends Guinness and Caesar <laughs> and hot chocolate and coffee will help you help us make sure that uh, we can produce this show for you that uh, you have grown to appreciate. And we thank you very much. And if you can't donate, remember the gift of your attention is what is most important and the gift of your participation. So thank you very much for that as well. It's very important to us. Mm -hmm. Now, um, let's see, because democracy is something that you do, reminder, again, if you happen to be in Alberta, the NDP leadership race is underway, so please get involved in some way. If you want better choices come election time, then you need to get involved in just selecting who's going to be the candidate on offer. That's your best defense and your best insurance. So get involved. That's uh, the party, uh, party stuff is where it's really happening, and that's where you need to be. Also, if you happen to be living in Saskatchewan, New Brunswick, or British Columbia, there are provincial elections coming this year, so please try to get involved. I, I always recommend uh, working at a polling station if you can uh, manage it. It's a wonderful experience to see democracy happening uh, in real time and seeing just how people, happy people are to vote. It really, really warms the heart. It gives you, renews your love for mm -hmm. Canada a bit. Like this, or refreshes. I won't say renews because you know we haven't lost it, but just reminds you how much you actually just do love the damn place. All right, from the Beaver Lodge, this is your eager Beaver saying it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself, Mister Grizzly. Please drop the wisdom on us. Kopectate is your friend. Then there you go. <laughs> Mr. Just Grizzly. remember that. Please cue the cock. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to a true north eager beaver media incorporated podcast the true north eager beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors the misfy mysteries from corvid moon publishing your source for science fiction fantasy and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters canadiantarot.com their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. I made something. Let's see if this works. Let's try. 
Oh, I like it, like it. Mikey, like it. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Um, I like that. Here's something I wanted to share quickly. It reminded me of something when I read it. It's uh, Doug Fordish from uh, at Pat Daniel underscore 75 on the yep. X or Twitter. Ontarian. I can't afford my rent. Doug Ford. Beer? Ontarian. I need a family doctor. Doug Ford. Beer? Ontarian. Gun violence is up. Doug Ford. Tailgate party? Ontarian. I can't afford food. Doug Ford. Beer? Yeah. I literally tweeted the other day, he's offering us beer because he doesn't have a fix for healthcare or housing. He's literally confessing that he's conceding. He's given up. Yeah. yeah. He's given up. Let me see if I can do this. I'm going to try something here. So just, just bear with me for a second. Let's see if this works. I'm going to, I'm going to try something because I, I think I can... <laughs> I can air the uh, the audio. Let me just try this and see if it works. Hang on. Because this, 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 it reminded me of that. I don't hear a thing. Oh, I know why. Hang on, just a second. I, I made the mistake of not turning up the volume. Anyway. Wow. Pump up the volume, pump up the volume, pump up the volume. Eh, eh. You boom, could. Boom, 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 boom. You had a little bit of feedback. This this might work this time. Let me try it again. Hang on. Let's see if it works. I'm, I'm just trying to get something to, to work for me here. Can you hear that? Nope. Not at all. No. Oh, yep. well. okay. uh, yeah. Do you have the rim shot ready, Mr. Grizzly? Um, I will in a second. Rim shot, eh? Let me just find it here. I got too many banks of stuff. Yeah, I got we it. Are, I'm, I'm, we are not sticking the, dis the, the dismount today. All yeah. right, kits and cups. Why did the fig go to the party alone? Uh, I don't know. Because it couldn't find a date. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Have a beaver big day, everyone. All right. We're out of here. I'll see you later. Uh -huh.